Good evening if you're joining me and if you're not joining me then why not? Alright, a bit of a change of scenery tonight. We've got a wooden floor, so we've actually got like, it's a bit like a dojo, we've got loads of room to spend, spend, spend all our space and we can just move around. We can do lots of karate, we can do lots of kata as well. So, um, I'm probably going to be looking more at the TV than at the phone because my phone's gone off. Um, so I'm just going to be looking at that. Alright, let's get into just let's just warm up right leg back short stance. And from this position, all I want to do is just engage the hips and just reverse punch. Each, ni, sa, shi, go, rik, sich, ach, ku, ju. Okay, change your legs. Remember when you reverse punch in to push forward on that front knee. So don't just engage the hips because what happens is once you engage the hips, and this again I'll move into the centre as well, when you engage the hips from this position to push the hip forwards, that front knee comes back, so you've got to make sure that you're also engaging but pushing into the stance as well. Okay, same thing, opposite side, each, knee, sa, shi, go, ruk, sich, ach, ku, ju. Oh my goodness gracious me. Got one viewer that's actually in the same same vicinity as me. Oh Alright, moving his stance. Right leg back short stance. So we'll start with the most basic of the stances. And then we'll go into Zen Cut so that we'll go into Kibidach, um Shikadach, we'll go a different direction and things, and then maybe we'll go into some advanced stances. Then we'll carry on from where we finished yesterday with Kat Sion Chin. So moving forward in in uh, Hands then cut sadach. Key point here is, is that when you have a stance that's got width, when you're looking straight at it, that you cut, you do what's called siriachi, which is the arc of the foot in and out. So you don't come forwards this way. And you want to leave your hips to last. So try to just throw the hips in. As you move forwards, throw the hips in, and that's going to come with the back foot. So whatever foot is your back foot when you finish, that's where the hips are going to be used. Here. I'll slow this right down for you. Step. Hip. Step. Hip. You save this to last. Don't do this. And avoid doing this. You goes to not move this foot at all. It's called telegraphing. So if you think about kumite, and you start doing this, you're just telling your opponent or whoever that you're going to move. It doesn't matter what you're going to do next. So from this position here, keep this foot till last, step. Keep it till last, step. The other thing when you're in hands and cut to that is, I've seen far too often people doing, people doing the karate in the fighting stance and they're kind of like this. So the square in the stance, no, it's a fighting stance. If you can imagine this is the frame here. What I want to do is I want to take this target here, not staying, just, all right, that didn't work. All right, whatever, dude. So if this is the frame here, this is also a target. And what you want to do when you're in your hands and cuts it actually is narrow that target off. So the frame is now a little bit small. It's still quite big but it's still a little bit smaller. So you go 45 degrees. When you engage the hips in your hands and cut so you can either go front foot or for like a hand, hand get to that, you can go, sorry, you can go back foot or you can go hand get to that front foot. So we'll just move forwards again each. Don't forget to siriachi knee. Now when we're moving backwards, same principle applies. But it's gonna be this, this foot here, what's gonna be the front foot which is going to allow the hip technique to happen. So we're going to go itch here. So we use the front foot to engage the hip. If that's slowed down, this foot hasn't moved, the attitude's still the same. And then we throw the hip in so that it looks a little bit like this. We've got room for one more. We have this. Oh, squeaking. That's just my voice. Okay, you can put techniques in with this as well now. So once you've got the, once you've got the stepping, you can start to put techniques in. Um, but until you get the step, 
don't put any techniques in. I think you need to work on the foundation first rather than jump into something else. So for example, you've got to time it so that as this, as that all lands, your technique actually happens as well. So as you're moving forward, it's no good doing this. For example, as you get amber right. And it's no good doing this. For example, there's a punch. Everything's going to happen at the same time. So on the move, your arm will move. So that everything can finish at the same time. On the move, you're out, on the foot move, your arm will move. So that everything can finish at the same time. So that's your hands in cuts of that. That's how we would transition from there. Your goal is to save the foot until last. Save the front foot or what's going to be your back foot until last when you move. That will help you with the hips. When you're going backwards, save what is going to be your front foot to last. But don't forget, any stance that has width when you're looking towards the front, you must siriachi. There's always going to be that siriachi there. And it's just this arc in and arc out motion. Sorry, Martin, it's karate class, there's no vlogs today, maybe tomorrow. Um, so, from this position, stepping in, Siriachi, and through. Siriachi, and through. Again, maintain guard position. So, don't, when you, when you move your guard, don't let your guard come this way. If anything, let your guard roll forwards or roll backwards, it doesn't matter which, but we're going to pass this centre point. And notice that the elbows aren't popping out either. So it's not going to be this, here, we're just going to roll forwards or roll backwards, this way, or roll forwards, this way. But there's going to be that kind of action there. A bit like if you were doing um, Kata Cezanne, you move your arms in this motion, keep the elbows in. So as you step forwards, here. As you step back, here. Treat it like a bit of an UQK block, so it can either be, um, if you treat it like an UQK block here, moving through. Treat it like an UQK block on the way back, moving through. So you still have that, that kind of action there. Um, next stance, Kibirach, horse riding. Oh no, Zen cuts, we'll do Zen cuts. That Zen cuts are actually exactly the same as hand Zen Kutsadach. So as you move forward in your, in your Zen Kutsadach, you save this foot to last. Your back foot's always on a 45 degree angle, or 22.5, just don't go square with this back foot. You can have your, just relax your hips. Now as you're moving forwards in this, don't use this first. Don't do this first. You will find as a beginner moving forwards in Zen Kutsadach that that happens first. That happens first. No, get rid of that. You've got to take away anything unnecessary in your training. And this here is unnecessary, so keep that till last. Same as your hands and cuts of that here, drop it into stance. Here, drop it into stance. <clears throat> and then the same would obviously be on the way back. So as we go forward in and cuts of that, there. Again, here. As you go backwards in your Zen cuts of that, Straighten this up last. One, two. One, two. And it's always the heel that's moving. It's not this. It's never the toes that are moving. It's always the heel. So when you move forward in your Zen Cuts of that, or your hands in Cuts of that, it's not this and then this. From here, bring the heel in, not the toes outwards. Moving certain parts of the feet will change the dimension of the stance. For example, if you are in, um, I'll say, I'll say Zen Cuts of that, and you're here, you can change the dimension of the stance by either bringing the heel in or turning the toes outwards. Sometimes you might need to bring the toes inwards, sometimes you might need to bring the heel inwards, sometimes you might need to push the heel outwards. But you've got to have a straight line from that outside edge. Front foot will look like it's turned in, it's not. It's just a straight line from that outside edge. And then as we go forwards, through. And then one more, through. And as we go backwards, it's the front foot that straightens up, last. Front foot straightens up, last. 
So there's Zen Cuts of Action. Again, you can start putting techniques in there with that. But when you're going through this, don't. Timing is key. Timing will add to your power in the technique itself. So when the stance actually lands, everything else needs to land with it. It's no, it's no good again, stopping and then starting again. For example, stopping, starting again. It's no good. It's always got to be, or as the Japanese would say, this. Japanese never say the word no. They always use an X. I'm the making X. Um, Japanese word for no is what? You don't know, I'll tell you in a minute, but you don't use it. It's either this, or you just say I prefer not to when you find a way around it, because saying no in Japanese is uh, disrespectful. So you step forwards, everything's got to finish at the same time. Everything. Locking out the back leg, hick a tear back on the hip, punch. Finish the same time. Okay, from there, kibirach. Depending how you're moving, depending how you want to move. Now, kibirach is a sideways strong stance. It's quite strong forwards and backwards, depending if it's done properly or not. So, kibirach is two shoulder widths wide, and how do you get there? You go into obviously, I suck a dutch, or suba dutch, I could dutch, chichi dutch, kibirach. So, it's, it's really, really strong sideways. What you will find is that in kata, you will find that your technique will always be to the side. For example, basai dai. Your technique will always be towards the side. If you're doing your side kicks in your kibrech, you move in a linear motion. There very rarely is any, um, I don't know of any, siriachi in kibrech. Even now, because we've got width, Points moving forwards, not going to work. So we've moved sideways, but we've moved foot to foot. This direction, this direction. We move water, and then we go the other way. Foot to foot, foot to foot. One major key in all stances, it doesn't matter what the stance is, but all major key, one major key in stances is when you move, try not to let the body lean it's all going to be in the hips, it's all going to be in the legs. Then from there we'll go back, but not this. Moving backwards, moving forwards in Zen Kutsadach. This. Moving backwards in Zen Kutsadach. This. No, no, no. Use the feet, use the legs. One thing I was thinking about because I knew I was doing this class was in every stance you are told to grip the floor with your toes. And there's a reason for that. And the reason is because when you're gripping the floor with your toes, you're ready to pounce, you're ready to, you can, you, your body weight is forwards, your body weight is on the toes. If you want to move, that's how we move forwards, we push. So I don't really change anything. Oh, it's getting, getting warm in here. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, keep it actually easy. Keep it actually literally just straight forwards, straight backwards. There, there won't be any linear move, there won't be any, from here, if you're on a 45, the chances are you'd be in Shikadach. You wouldn't move in Kibadach, that just feels a bit weird. All right, so just have that in mind that, in fact, in Kati, you don't, you don't, this, you don't move in Kibadach. Kibadach is more of a stable stance there to lock in. Hips and shoulders need to be in line. So most people, Zen cuts it actually is a big one. Look at this. Oh god. They'll be here. But what we've done there is number one, we've gone capital D or little b. Boop, boop. <laughs> but we've got power going this direction, but we've also got 18 stone going this direction. Where do you think the power's gonna be going? That way. So your goal is to have. Just make it so that you feel like you're leaning forwards. You're not, just your shoulders are above your hips, all times. So try not to lean in stance, and when you're in kibirach from this position, don't, don't sit back in the stance. When somebody says roll your hips forwards, they don't mean push them forwards. They just mean here. So that slight shift, very, very small, there. 
and that's just tensing in the legs and tensing the backside. So you don't lift your hips up this way. Look what it's done to the small of the back now. Look what it's done to the whole back, it's arched. So from this position here, just strengthen, strengthening the gut area. So key bridge, again, side kicks. You can do key bridge with uh, side back fist, anything sort of towards the side. But again, but you won't really move in carter with key bridge. So that tells me that key bridge isn't meant to move. It's meant to be just a kind of grounded stance. I don't know who lives below, but <laughs> they'll be wondering what's going on tonight. <laughs> okay, um, next stance, shikodach. Shikodach. Japanese word for no is ie, but you never use it. You always say hai, or some styles say us, which is, uh, it's, it's not really used anymore in tradition. Um, it's just more of a hai. So you don't use ie. This style the Japanese say no. Okay, chigarech. Depending how we're moving, we can go from this position here to this position here, but then why would we use sumo stance? We'd may as well use kibirach. So we'll start with just moving linear, which is straight forwards. Trick to this, avoid, totally and utterly avoid, this and this. Step one, step two. You want it to be one step. Every technique you do in karate, there's always going to be stages. You teach that to beginners. You do that when you first start. But the goal of karate is to make it flow. To make it be, like Bruce Lee said, like water. So as you're moving forwards, try not to go offline to go back online. See where the head is right now? Now, I was over there a minute ago. I was here. But then, we'll get back on. So you've got to avoid that. How do you do that when you're moving? And again, this is where Siri actually gonna come in because as you can see from the frontwards view, there's a gap, okay, there's a gap. If we're going this way, then we're going in a linear motion, as in, in a straight line. Same so going backwards, but I'll go into that in a second. So we're gonna move forwards on a 45 degree angle. Push forwards first. Your body weight is centered, push forwards first. That will keep you from going too far over here. And it's the back foot that's going to execute the hips if you're going to move forwards. So if we throw some hip in there now, moving forwards in sumo stance with hip technique. Through. Through. We notice that we're going straight line, we're not going tick tocking backwards and forwards. Doing it slow as hard, like you would for a uh, same chin. But you would have that Siriachi movement. When you're moving forwards and your heels are in line, that changes things. Moving backwards, by the way. So when you're moving forwards, Whatever's the back foot will give you the hip. When you're moving backwards, use that to help you. Drag the foot back. Moving forwards in a line. Just coming straight through. Center point. Feet are together. Step. Hip. Hip is with the back foot. You can't see it. I'll do it this way so you can see. Step, centre line. Step, left foot now, this side, is now in position to finish sumo stance. So when I finish with this back foot, I'll be on a 45 degree angle. So you engage this last. <clears throat> Moving backwards, use this to drag you. Fire the heel, that will help you move more fluid in your stance. I see far too many people, and again I said it last night, that black belts, own club, blah, 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 blah. Got no idea how to move in stance. But you have to walk around with this round of waist and it's like, oh, hang on a minute. Um, you see it on YouTube all the time. I always find time to comment, as you do, because I don't know how somebody can wear a black belt, but not. I mean, there was a guy in India that I was watching the other day, and he's kind of 
punching like this. He was in his mid thirties, I would say, but he actually said that he'd been doing karate since he was four. But yeah, still didn't know how to punch. So just be aware of this sort of stuff when you're training with somebody online or when you're training with somebody in a dojo. If they can't punch properly, change classes. Okay, and if all you're doing is online classes, change classes. I know it's a bit hard these days because of COVID and things, but you know, again, like I said last night, do not take your dojo training away just so you can stay home. It's uh, Goya, G O Y A. Get off your arm chair. So, from this position, as you move forwards now, we're going to just nice and slow with hip, but slowly, controlled through center, step. Engage. Through center. Step. Engage. We'll go two the other way. Through to the center. Step. Engage. One more. Through to the center. Step. And then engage. Now if we go backwards, which we will do now, we're going to go into the center. Stepping out. Foot's in position 45. And then we engage that, what will be our front foot. Into the center, stepping out, engage. Go forwards with hip, so we're using this left foot last, front foot last. Use it to move forwards, but engage that, engage that left foot last. Coming forwards, through, and then again, through. We'll go the other way, use this foot last, your right foot, or whichever, whichever one's facing your screen, use that last, through. Okay, you can, and in some carters you find yourself um, coming through and throwing the hip in. The hip is a technique, believe it or not. If you can imagine, in most of the carters where the hip is used, it's always low. So if you were just to come forwards, just here, like a shoulder barge, and through, and then again. Through. Just shoulder bags and your way through. Next stance is um, what shall I do? Sanchin. Sanchin bench. It roughly translates to two names. First name is pigeon toe stance because your front foot, your feet are turned inwards. But then the other thing is hourglass stance. All right, all right, I can hear you saying now, well, you look a bit wide in the middle to be an hourglass. It's not the middle. Go from waist, from here, top of the hourglass, into the middle of the hourglass, then back out again. That's the hourglass, not this. So hourglass stance or pigeon toe. Uh, dimensions of this, I ain't gone through the dimensions of others because they were pretty simple, but dimensions of this are wherever your back foot is, I'll call my right foot my back foot, have the toes in line, have, sorry, have the heel in line of the front foot, so we're kind of here now. In line, shoulder width apart, don't turn the toes inwards. Yeah, back in the day, we're not doing it these days, are we? <laughs> um, we're all... Uh, we're all, uh, we call it tier three, but it's really just, you know, a weaker version of lockdown. Oh, what are you looking at? <laughs> so as you move through, and the further you go, the more you can see. So what you'll find is that regardless of what, if you, if you get a little bit higher in your grade, you'll find your stance becomes a little bit longer. And your sand chin isn't, but for beginners, sand chin, shoulder width wide, um, from the balls of the feet, and then heel outwards, and also heel of the front foot in line with the toes of the back foot. Um, you also find the width gets a little bit wider as well. When I first started learning this, it was here and the knees were together. Now, for a guy that's uncomfortable, all right, the idea was that the, was that the and this just shows what I was taught, that, that the idea was that the kick that comes in catches the knees. 
Now I don't think I like that, somebody kicking me in with the boots on, kicking towards my knees, that's going to hurt a little bit. Until you get a little bit further up, the goal is to, yes, protect the groin, but protect it with the thighs. So as the kick comes in, it gets stopped. You was doing that karate stuff, mate. Just to let you know. Yeah, you knew me when I first started. You actually took me to one of my, uh, to a grading one day in Armley. I remember that day. You took me down, I was invited because I was going to go full time. Um, so you were here, you drove me. Um, so from here, I was a yellow belt at the time. So from this position, as you move forwards, now when I say don't turn the toes outwards, this way. If you're going to correct this stance from anywhere, push the heel outwards. It's better to be a little bit wider than it is to be too narrow. Now when you move in San Chin, you bring the heel in. You don't push the toes. Now look what it's done to the stance. So you bring the heel in. By bringing the heel in, watch what it actually does to the stance. As you bring the heel in, you find yourself moving forwards. That just helps with the transition of moving forwards in San Chin Dach. In Kata, you will move forwards in San Chin, which means it's an offensive stance. You don't move backwards, so it's not defensive. You never, you never move backwards in San Chin in Kata. You always go forwards. You always go towards the attack. You move backwards in cat stance because it's defensive. You very rarely move forwards in cat stance. So again, this would be defensive. This would be offensive. So depending on the kata, one stance is defensive, one stance is offensive. If you want to correct me on that, feel free. Okay, so moving forward in San Shin. Again, we've got width in the stance, so we're going to move Suriachi. Heel in first. Biggest problem with this, and I see a lot of, I've seen a lot of black belts, first down, second down, third downs, um, even fourth downs. You know, when they're moving with this, watch what this foot does. They kind of go one, two, three. No. That shows immaturity, immaturity in your, in your karate. From this position here, the second this foot's straight, doesn't go anywhere else then. You want to move it once, not twice. Straight the front foot by bringing the heel in, so we're coming into the frame, leave it still, through. So if you want to look at different levels in karate, you can see the beginners, beginner as in immature in karate, regardless of what's around your waist, it just shows immaturity in karate, shows a lack of teaching that the student may have had. If you want to see the height of somebody moving forward in San Chin, watch what this front foot does. If it does this, one, two, again, change classes, <laughs> change clubs, uh, find a Tadashi, and then, <laughs> no, no. Um, come back and watch this video. So from this position now, we won't use any guard or anything, but I want to focus on what, what's happening below the belt. Okay, so from here, straight in the front foot, nice and straight on the outside edge. Leave it still. Center point. Now when you're moving out into this, you'd actually move in a circular motion. It's not, it's not really a circular motion. So you may have been told before that your feet move in an arc. No, they don't. They do not. What happens is your feet come in, foot comes in a straight line, and then it goes out in a straight line. That's when the heel engages. The heel kind of pushes out. So as you move forward with this now, you're going to go in and out. This here finishes the stance off. Well, to a point. This here finishes the stance off. See that slight little shift? We've, we've set the stance with the feet, all well and good. But then, we need to set the stance. I'll come closer so you can see. In fact, I'll do it this way so you can see. Feet are in position, stance is set. You might say, well, that looks like, you know, quite, you know, damage of that stance are quite good. It's weak. There. Strengthen here. Strengthen here. Um, that's how they traditionally test this stance by coming on kicking your backside of your back of your back leg. 
If that's tense, then the stance is going to be strong. All right. So when you're moving forwards, heel in, leave it forwards. So your foot's actually going, your back foot, straight now, your back foot's actually going one, two. It's kind of going in this zigzag. So you're actually from here. Because look what happens. If you use the hands as, a, as, a, as an example, in, and you've got to come backwards. I'll do it this way for you so you can see. Um, from here, you'll see most people moving forwards, and then that foot comes back. It's incorrect movement. Heel in, body weight forwards. Use that heel coming in to push forwards in the stance. That will help you with your side to side. And then it's just in, out. Heel in. What that also does is by bringing the heel in, strengthens the inside of the legs. And then from this position, in and out. Boom, boom. You're moving here. You're moving this way. In, out. Heel in, transition forwards, out. The goal is to then not stop. So you don't get to there and stop. The goal is to move everything forwards. Same time. So as you're doing this, use this to generate forwards. Through. Use this to generate forwards. Through. This to generate forwards and through. You will typically see this with Chuduke. Um, I would always go, well, it doesn't really matter which direction you do it. Could be this way, could be this way. Doesn't matter. From here, as you step forward to Chugi UK, Chugi is uh, just double, UK, okay, receive. Here. So as the feet come together, that's your centre point. <coughs> Through. So we'll put it all together now, nice and slow. Eesh. Don't forget there's also a slightwards dip. So even though you're moving forwards with this, you're also dropping slightly as well. And then back up again. So just be aware of that. You're going to drop slightly, but you're going to come back up. From here, down, through. Down, through. Down, through. And again, the goal is to use, to have the feet and the hands land together. And it doesn't matter what technique you do with that. Um, next stance, Neko Ashidach. Neko Ashidach. What are we on? 7.32. Been going half an hour, look at that. If I haven't waved to you, just know that I am. So Neko Ashidach. Again, we'll move forwards and backwards with this, and I'll show you some different transitions you can do as well for your, for your calf stance. Um, <laughs> when I was training with the other club years ago, the, the, uh, the guy that I was training with used to call it Neko Wokadach. Niko Ashi Dach. Ashi leg, foot. Ashi, I think Ashi's foot. So Neko Ashi Dach. Not Neko Waka. <laughs> Eh, it was Australian, but no, never mind. <laughs> Neck a walker dodge. <laughs> right, dimensions of this, and again, people get this totally wrong all the time. Whether they're in Carter, whether they're in Keon, um, it doesn't matter, they always get this wrong. Nine times out of ten, and here's why. Back foot is about 22.5 degrees. Don't go to 45, but about 22.5. And then from here, your front foot, the heel, sorry, the ball of the front foot is in line with the heel. It's not heel to heel. Because in order for it to be heel to heel, you have to then come around. That's not how you should move in this stance. Ball to heel. And again, it's defensive. I'll move forwards, then I'll move backwards. And I'll just show you some hip exercise you can do with this as well. 
When we move forwards, we drop. Back foot straight until it comes through in a straight line. Why do people get this wrong? Because they drop it too far and then they can't come through in a straight line. So they either have to go over the top or they've got to come around. It should come through in a straight line. Your feet moving in, in a straight line. So as you move forward with this, one, two. Drop, through. Drop, through. As you move back with this, straight line, fix up the front foot. Straight line, fix up the front foot. 99.9% .9 of the body weight is on the back leg, so you're balancing there. Um, you, the, the only muscles you're using on the front leg is to shape the foot. And the foot is shaped, should be a straight line from the knuckle of the big toe all the way up to the knee. So not here, should be here. Toes can rest on the floor. Ideal for, for kicking. Um, that's pretty much what it's designed for. So you can block and kick. Whatever kick there is. So that's what a neck wash is actually designed for. So if you can imagine somebody coming in with a straight punch, one kick. We're taking the weight backwards and kicking. Which you've done an exercise before. Now when you're moving backwards in, oh, I've done the backwards. You can move diagonally as well in this stance and I quite like this. Um, do it with uh, whatever technique you want really. So from this position now we're gonna go, we're on a 45, we're gonna go forwards. And I notice that this foot here is still pointing in that direction where I'm going. I'm gonna use the heel of this foot to drag this foot in, here. We'll go forwards again, straight forwards, Turn the heel out, drag in. Beginners or immature, just young karate, as in I wear a black belt but I don't know what I'm doing kind of thing. I bought it off, uh, you know, hood flung dung down the street. Kick a can about, short answer can, that sort of stuff. We'll do this, watch this front foot. Look what's happened to the hips. Don't like it. I'm going to be stepping first. One, two. How do you put the brakes on? Stick your backside out. So whenever you're moving in cat stance, by sticking your backside out, you put the brakes on. Stop you from falling. How does the block work? Well, like that. I don't need the attacks coming in this direction anyway. Let's imagine my opponent knows karate. The attacks coming in this direction. If I go there, I don't need any hip. I've just, you know, moved out of the way. And then, whatever comes next. Moving backwards, same principle applies. Well, ish. When we move back, we're going to go in diagonal again. Front foot, we moved away now. Now notice this foot hasn't changed its attitude. It's still pointing in that direction. Use the heel to drag the front foot in. Step, heel. Easy peasy. So as you're moving forwards, you can go one, two. One, two. Nice and slowly. All right, that's, uh, that's Sam Chin. Uh, Neko Wakadach. Neko Ashidach. Cat stance. Why? Because when you are moving forwards or backwards in this stance, you kind of prowl like a cat. So you don't go up to go down. Drop in, forwards. Drop in, forwards. Same thing going backwards. Here. Here. Watch the body, make sure it doesn't collapse. Um, the other way to move backwards in this stance is a drag with the front foot. One, two, that would be a way to move, to move backwards. If you move forwards in this stance, which you can do, but you don't see it often, you would go heel first. So we go from this position this way. We can use our toes then 
to dig down on top of the other person's foot and then use our cast stance to move forwards. And if you get it in the right place, yes, it does hurt. <laughs> Mindy's going, yes, it does. Yes, it does. So, moving forwards. One. Two. And you make that more of a flowing movement. One. Two. That's how you move forwards and backwards on the neck, actually, actually. Next stance, probably final stance, I think. Final stance, probably one of the hardest to get right. Um, didn't start liking this until I was about second down. Um, hate it up until then. Just like I hate back kick until probably second or third down. And I actually hate back side down until I was second or third down. One of my favourite things, all right? So, as you're moving forwards with the uh, core cut to that, now, I explain the dimension of this on another video, but the movement is slightly, it's all going to be, it's all going to be linear. And you will find that everything you do is linear with this stance. You've got to have 70% of the weight on your back leg, which leaves 30% on the front. It's just the ugly cousin of this. Um, so yeah, it's uh, just the ugly cousin, they come from the same family. Now, feet perpendicular. If you don't know what that means, it means right angle. So as you bring your feet together, you have a right angle. Push the knee back, it doesn't matter if it collapses in a little bit. Push the knee back. The one thing you do not want to do with this stance, well, there's a lot of things you don't want to do with this stance. Front, front leg needs to be bent. Even though I said it comes from the same, same family as Zen Cuts of that, this is the only stance where a leg is straight. Every other stance you do, no matter what the stance is, the knees will be bent, both of them. What people tend to do is they tend to go too short or way too long. If you're too long in the stance, you can't move, it's not workable. It's a pointless exercise, you just, you're wasting energy. So you've got to get the correct dimension in this stance. And to get the actual height of the stance, rather than pushing the body weight backwards and doing this with the front leg, just imagine down on a pole. So you kind of got to go down into the stance. Make sure your feet are perpendicular. Heels in line to begin with, but again, the further you go, the more you can see. So as we move forwards from an advanced level, you will see that my heels aren't in line anymore. It's not here. You can go there, but you've got to get the first one right first. Whenever you move in this stance, forwards or backwards, sideways or whichever way you want to go your feet will always come together every single time so your centerpiece from hip for this will always be this to engage the hip is the same as every other stance the leg you're going to use last notice as far as it engaged it yes it's come off the floor heels off the floor drop the hip in you combine that then with from here, one, two, three. You then combine that with, from here, the whole thing. Whole thing moving forwards. The same thing going backwards. This way. Here. Feet together, step. Engage. Now I say it's the back foot that gives you the hips. In some kata that's not the case. For example, Basai Dai. Basai Dai, you don't use the end, the last one, you don't use the back foot to engage the hips. You use the front foot. And you use the front foot by bringing the heel in, not the toes outwards. So as you're here, yes, centre point again. Step out. Feet haven't changed attitude, this way. So you bring the heel in. And that should be something a little bit like, from here, step, step, notice I've stepped out to the back as well, <coughs> fire. And if we put the whole thing together, we end up with <coughs> this. If that makes perfect nonsense to you. All right, look, that was 45 minutes on uh, stances alone. 
Um, we've probably got a bit of time for, for kata. So I'm going to leave you with that. Practice those first. Um, mix and match it. One, one thing that I used to like doing in class was having two, two attackers and one defender. And you go from your cat stance, punch comes in, parry, <coughs> chuki yuke, in your san chin dash. And then from here, punch comes in, parry, nekawashi dash. One, two, here, there. Using your hips at all time. Here. And it's this front leg that, that gives you that. So you just basically have two attackers. Doesn't matter what arm they use, 90 degree attacks, as long as you parry first, turn. As long as you parry first, turn. These blocks here, they kind of just flow together. So yeah, that's it, that's all I've got time for. Well it's not, I've probably got another 15 minutes, but um, I'm gonna leave it there. There's no point in starting kata. What I want you to practice is just moving, no matter what the kata is. We've only got up to Sion Chin. We've not gone any higher than Sion Chin, really. I think we did one session where it was empty. Um, but yeah, just practice the movement in the stance and think about everything that I've said. Um, there are other ways as well, but that's nearly an hour on stances. There's and get to that which we haven't covered, which we don't really use. Um, for the Dutch, which we don't use, well we do use in kata so shin, but let's uh, let's leave that stuff to you know the experts. Um, so yeah, practice those first, and for somebody that's for somebody that's probably red belt and above, all of those stances will be basics. Yeah, I know I have, but I've just, if you'd have been watching, you'd have said there's no point in me starting something coming to just finish. That's not bad for somebody that, you know, watched the first five minutes and then buggered off. Shut up, man. You've probably just been sat on the sofa doing nothing. Um, so from red belt and above, every single one of those stances is basic. It's key on. You might find that when you are, why not? Why not? It's not like you're paying for it. <laughs> it's free. When it's free, I can do what I want. Um, when you are a beginner up to say blue, some of those stances will be called advanced stances. But when you get from red upwards, even maybe even a good blue, they'd just be basic stances. Just like these techniques here, they might be considered advanced techniques to some people. But I would say from red upwards, they're just basic. They just, they just become part of your basic, part of your key on that. I agree. What do you mean you agree? Agree on which bit, Rich? <laughs> you don't even know what I'm talking about, I don't think. Because it's free, I can do what I want. Or do you agree on the whole thing? Have you, I mean, there's nothing good on TV. No. What time does EastEnders start tonight? In about 10 minutes. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to leave that with you. Remember, just because it's on, on a video, doesn't, don't let that take away from dojo training. You got to carry my arms. How you know I'm sat here? Just warming up. Yeah, all right. So you're just, no, I haven't got a camera in your arms. That'd be a bit weird. Um, but I know you. Um, and yeah, Rich, just warming up. We've, we're only 50 minutes into it. So, you know, I'm just warming up too. But again, it's free. So just call it an hour eh? or 40 minutes off, whatever. Don't let the video take away from dojo training. This will be uploaded to YouTube probably tomorrow under um, tier three, part two. So yeah, stay with that. And um, yeah, practice, practice, practice. You can get good at anything if you practice. I'm leave that with you. So I'll say sayonara and um, stay safe. Ain't all from whole weird. I don't think I understand. Bye bye. Bye.